already there. Let's have a look at the uh, newspapers now. Alison Sargent is joining us here in Tech. She's starting today in Europe. Papers are continuing there to weigh in on the migrant crisis at the border with Belarus, Alison. People are trapped at the border with Lukashenko behind them and barbed wire in front of them. Uh, that's how the Polish paper Gazeta V. Borja summarizes the situation on their front page. Uh, they say that thousands of refugees gathered at the Kuznica border crossing on Monday, saying that they want to cross in legally. The paper writes that they had already spent days living in a nearby forest in freezing tents without food or water, and that they were accompanied to the border by Belarusian officials. Uh, meanwhile, France's Catholic paper La Croix headlines that Belarus uh, is using the migrants as a weapon, something we've certainly heard uh, from Europe before. The paper is essentially repeating the accusations that we've been hearing for days now from the EU, uh, that Alexander Lukashenko is using these people to punish Europe for not recognizing his contested election uh, and for imposing sanctions on Belarus, sanctions that were expanded Monday by the EU because of this crisis. Uh, British paper, The Guardian, they're agreeing with that assessment. But Belarus uh, responsible for this crisis. But the paper says the EU still has a, a duty to help the migrants, doesn't it? Yeah, the paper points out that at least nine migrants uh, have died since this standoff began. Uh, most recently, a young Syrian man whose body was found over the weekend. And while The Guardian writes that Europe should stand up to the instrumentalization of migrants for political purposes, well, the paper says they need to stand up to that in Poland as well as in Belarus, because in Poland, Poland, uh, the right-wing nationalist government has been using this crisis to pass a law, uh, allowing them to send people back without even looking at their asylum applications. Uh, the paper points out that that has not gotten any pushback from the EU. Uh, meanwhile, Brussels is also letting Poland go ahead with its plans for what The Guardian calls a Trump-style border wall. Uh, the Guardian's conclusion here, since the migrant crisis of 2015, Europe has collectively hardened its heart against vulnerable outsiders. Uh, this crisis the paper says, is a litmus test of just how callous it is prepared to be. Uh, and, Stuart, we can end uh, this section uh, with a cartoon by Coco for Liberation uh, that ultimately does put the blame uh, back on Belarus and Russia. Uh, you see it shows Lukashenko and Putin driving people towards the, bo uh, the border with a bulldozer. Uh, Lukashenko there is saying, we're bringing them their humanistic ideals on a platter, and they're sulking. Let's move to the US for this next story. Vice President uh, Kamala Harris has been getting quite a bit of negative press there. Yeah, her approval rating fell to just 28 percent last week, lower even than Dick Cheney, if you remember him, uh, Bush's vice president. Uh, there have also been a series of reports that she's getting sidelined by Democrats as a potential successor to Joe Biden. This Vanity Fair headline uh, pretty much sums it up. Uh, the Joe Biden succession drama is swallowing Kamala Harris. Uh, Vanity Fair explains that Harris's role has really limited her capacity to do any political outreach. Uh, meanwhile, other Democrats have been raising their national profiles, uh, notably Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg, uh, who outshined Harris as the spokes spokesperson uh, for this infrastructure bill that just passed. Now, the White House has been very firm in dismissing any rumors about a potential rift between Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. And this writer for New York Magazine is dismissing the idea that the successor to Biden, if he retires, would be anyone else but Kamala Harris. Uh, he writes, all this talk of Kamala Harris underwhelming the punditry is mostly hot air. It's not as if, he says, there was some Democratic alternative capable of blowing her away with charisma, popularity and electability. Uh, and he points out that Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren are both going to be quite old in 2024. And then Pete Buttigieg, he reminds us, has pretty serious issues winning over black voters. Perhaps somebody will come up through the middle. You never know. Yeah, you never know. She's going to go back to uh, The Guardian for this last story, Alison. Uh, this is a change to the French flag. I read about this. It's quite interesting, isn't it? That uh, despite being very visible, it nearly actually went completely unnoticed, didn't it? Yeah, this is the fact that the blue stripe was made significantly darker. Now, I have to say, I have a weird feeling that we talked about this before. Oh, uh, right. But according to The Guardian, it has just come up now after yeah. radio station Europe 1 uh, reported the story on Monday. The paper explains that Emmanuel Macron's 
Biden's administration made this change because, in part, they felt that it's simply more elegant, uh, but also because it's actually a return to the original color of the flag after the French Revolution. So they wanted to connect mm. with that symbolism. Uh, some people, though, Stuart, are reading even, even further into it. They see it as a rupture with the European Union because it no longer matches the blue of the EU flag, and it had actually been changed so that the two <laughs> would match back in the 1970s. Now, public opinion is reportedly mixed about the new flag. There are people who like the nostalgia, uh, who remember maybe the 60s, the 50s, that darker mm. blue, who like it. Uh, other people, though, think that it's ugly and that they don't like that it clashes with the EU flag. I have to say, I don't really have an opinion on this no, one. I don't really mind. I kind of like the dark blue. It's yeah, it's, nice. I guess it I is know. elegant. Yeah. I do like the Guardian's headline here, though, a very good use of yes, the phrase, it's very phrase good. sacre bleu. <laughs> sacre bleu, perfect. <laughs> Hopefully that didn't take them too long to come up with. Alison, <laughs> thank you very much. Alison Sarger with the newspapers for us on France 24.